Hello students, welcome to the lecture on database security and after the lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain threats and security issues, describe firewalls and database recovery, understand database security techniques. Let's start with a brief introduction to the database security. Database security entails allowing or disallowing user actions on the database and the objects within it. Oracle uses schemas and security domains to control access to data and to restrict the use of various database resources. Oracle provides comprehensive discretionary access control, database users and schemas. To access a data, database, a user must use a database application and attempt a connection with a valid username of the database. Each username has an associated password to prevent unauthorized use. Security Domain each user has a security domain, a set of properties that determine such things as the actions, privileges and roles available to the user, the table space quotas available disk space for the user. Privileges. A privilege is a right to run a particular type of SQL statement. Connect to the database, create a session. Create a table in your schema. Select rows from someone else's table. Run someone else's stored procedure, storage settings and quotas. We can direct and limit the use of disk space allowed or allocated to the database for each user, including default and temporary table spaces and table space quotas. Default table space. When a user creates a table index or cluster and no table space is specified to physically contain the schema object, the user's default table space is used if the user has the privilege to create the schema object and a quota in the specified default table space. The default table space provides Oracle with information to direct space use in situations where schema objects location is not specified. Temporary table space. Each user has a temporary table space. By directing all users' temporary segments to a separate table space, the temporary table space can reduce the I.O. contention among temporary segments and other types of segments. Table space quotas. Oracle can limit the collective amount of disk space available to the objects in a schema. Quotas or space limits can be set for each table space available to a user. This permits selective control over the amount of disk space that can be consumed by the objects of specific schemas. The profiles and resource limits. Each user is assi assigned a profile that specifies limitations on several system resources available to the user, including the following. The number of concurrent sessions the user can establish, the CPU processing time available for the user's session and a single call to Oracle made by a SQL statement. Amount of connect time available for the user's session, password restrictions. All systems have assets and security is about protecting assets. The first thing then is to know your assets and their value. In this unit, concentrate on database objects tables, views, rows, access to them, and the overall system that manages them. Note that not all data is sensitive, not all requires great effort at protection. All assets are under threat. The second thing is to know what threats are putting your assets at risk. These include everything such as power failure and employee fraud. Note that threats are partly hypothetical, always changing and always imperfectly known. Security activity is directed at protecting the system from perceived threats. If a threat is potential, you must allow for it to become an actuality. When it becomes actual, there is an impact. Impact you can consider and plan for. But in the worst case, there will be a loss. An outline development mechanism is document assets. Identify threats. Associate threats with each asset. Design appropriate mechanisms to protect each asset appropriate to its value and the cost of its protection to detect a security breach against each asset to minimize the losses incurred and to recover normal operation. Security skills from two directions. One is from the appreciation and awareness of changing threats and the other from the technical remedies to them. Unauthorized modification. Unauthorized disclosure. Loss of availability. This section is an overview of the categories of specific regulatory threats to database systems. Namely, 
commercial sensitivity, personal privacy and data protection, computer misuse, audit requirements, and considerations of logical access to the database, it is easy to lose sight of the fact that all system access imposes risks. If there is access to operating system utilities, it becomes possible to access the disk storage directly and copy or damage the whole database or its components. However, full consideration has to take all such access into account. To structure thoughts on security, you need a model of security. These come in various forms that depend on roles, degree of detail, and purpose. The major categories are areas of interest, threats, impact, and loss, as well as the actions involved in dealing with them. Security risks are to be seen in terms of the loss of assets. These assets include hardware, software, data, data quality, credibility, availability, business benefit. Here, we are primarily concerned with threats to the data and data quality, but, of course, a threat to one asset has consequential impact on other assets. What is always important is that you are very clear on just what asset needs protection. So, as a summary, this is shown in the chart. Finally, you need to accept that security can never be perfect. There always remains an element of risk, so arrangements must be made to deal with the worst eventuality, which means steps to minimize impact and recover effectively from loss or damage to assets. The two guiding principles are Appropriate security, you do not want to spend more on security than the asset is worth, and You do not want security measures to interfere unnecessarily in the proper functioning of the system. A security model establishes the external criteria for the examination of security issues in general and to provide the context for database considerations including implementation and operation. Specific DBMS have their own security models which are highly important in systems design and operation. The purpose of access control must always be clear. Access control is expensive in terms of analysis, design, and operational costs. It is applied to known situations, to known standards to achieve known purposes. Do not apply controls without all the above knowledge. Control always has to be appropriate to the situation. The main issues are introduced below. We are all familiar as users with the login requirement of most systems. Access to IT resources generally requires a login process that is trusted to be secure. This topic is about access to database management systems and is an overview of the process from the DBA perspective. Most of what follows is directly about relational client-server systems. Other system models differ to a greater or lesser extent, though the underlying principles remain true. The client has to establish the identity of the server, and the server has to establish identity of client. This is done often by means of shared secrets, either a password, or user ID combination, or shared by a graphic and or, or biometric data. It can also be achieved by a system of higher authority which has previously established authentication. Authorization relates to the permissions granted to an authorized user to carry out particular transactions and hence to change the state of the database, write item transactions and or or to receive data from the database, read item transactions. Discretionary control is where specific privileges are assigned on the basis of specific assets which authorized users are allowed to use in a particular way. The security DBMS has to construct an access matrix including objects. Mandatory control is authorization by level or role. A typical mandatory scheme is the four-level government classification of open, secret, most secret, and top secret. This section reviews some of the issues that arise in determining the security specification and implementation of a database system.
This section is about the implementation of security with an SQL. The basics are given in SQL 92, but, as you will realize, much security is DBMS and hardware specific. Where necessary, any specifics are given in the SQL of Oracle 8. For some ideas on ODBMS, as distinct from relational refer to secure object databases. The DBMS will maintain tables to record all security information. This will include Open SQL databases created and managed by the use of system tables. These comprise a relational database using the same structure and access mechanism as the main database. Removed. Treat these principles as abstract. Every country that has implemented data protection has followed these guides, but as usual the devil is in the detail. If you can be sure your database system complies with these, you have done well. Computer misuse, typical offenses, hacking offenses, simple unauthorized access, merely accessing data to which you are not entitled. The law is not concerned with the system's control per se. Unauthorized access with intent to commit an offense so you don't actually need to have succeeded just to have intended to do something to the database. Unauthorized modification, no one can even attempt access without making some changes, but the purpose is to penalize outcomes. Security plan. Identify the user community. Gather the database information. Determine the types of user account, that is, associate database objects and user roles. Undertake a threat analysis. Establish DBA authorities and procedures. Establish policies for managing, creating, deleting, auditing user accounts. Determine their user tracking policy. Establish their user identification method. Define security incidents and reporting procedure. Assess the sensitivity of specific data objects. Establish standards and enforcement procedures. Let's now take a look on threats and security issues, excessive privilege abuse. When users or applications are granted database access privileges that exceed the requirements of their job function, these privileges may be abused for malicious purpose. A given database user ends up with excessive privileges for the simple reason that database administrators do not have the time to define and update granular access privilege control mechanisms for each user. Preventive, preventing excessive privilege abuse Query level access control. Query level access control refers to a mechanism that restricts database privileges to minimum required SQL operations, select, update, etc., and data. Query level access control is useful not only for de detecting excessive privilege abuse by malicious employees but also for pre preventing some of the other top 10 threats described herein. Secure spear, dynamic profiling. Automated query level access control. The Secure Spear Database Security Gateway provides an automated mechanism for defining and enforcing query level access control policies. Secure Spear's dynamic profiling technology it applies to automated learning algorithms to create query level usage profiles for each user and application accessing the database. Legitimate Privilege Abuse the structure of the web application normally limits users to viewing an individual's, individual patient's healthcare history, multiple records cannot be viewed simultaneously, and electronic copies are not allowed. There are two risks to consider. The first is the rogue worker who is willing to trade patient records for money. The second and perhaps more common is the negligent employee that retrieves and stores large amounts of information to their client machine for legitimate work purposes. Preventing Legitimate Privilege Abuse Understanding the Context of Database Access The solution to legitimate privilege abuse is database access control that applies not only to specific queries as described above, but to the context surrounding, surrounding database access. By enforcing policy for client applications, time of day, location, etc., it's possible to identify users who are using legitimate database access privileges in a suspicious manner. Privilege Elevation 
Attackers may take advantage of database platform software vulnerabilities to convert access privileges from those of an ordinary user to those of an administrator. Vulnerabilities may be found in stored prods procedures, built-in functions, protocol implementations, and even SQL statements, preventing privilege elevation, IPS and query level access control. Privilege elevation exploits can be prevented with a combination of traditional intrusion prevention system, IPS, and query level access control. The IPS inspects database traffic to identify patterns which correspond to known vulnerabilities. IPS may be used to check whether or not a database request accesses a vulnerable function while query access control detects whether or not the request matches normal user behavior. Secure Spear Privilege Evaluation Integrated IPS and Dynamic Profiling Secure Spear integrates advanced IPS and dynamic profiling for query access control. Together, these technologies provide extremely accurate privilege elevation protection. Secure Spear IPS delivers protection against attacks targeting known vulnerabilities with SNOT compatible signature dictionaries for all protocols. Platform Vulnerabilities Vulnerabilities in underlying operating systems, Windows 2000, Unix, etc., and additional services installed on a database server may lead to unauthorized access, data corruption, or denial of service, preventing platform attacks, software updates, and intrusion prevention. Protection of database assets from platform attacks requires a combination of regular software updates, patches, and intrusion prevention systems, IPS. In addition, compatibility problems sometimes prevent software updates altogether. To address these problems, IPS should be implemented. Secure Sphere of Platform Protection, IPS. Impervas Application Defense Center Research Organization delivers unique database-specific attacks, protections from that ensures the world's most robust database, IPS security. In fact, Secure Sphere IPS even includes protections against vulnerabilities that have not been made public by database platform vendors and for which fixes are not available. SQL Injection in a SQL injection attack, a perpetrator typically inserts or injects unauthorized database statements into a vulnerable SQL data channel. Typically targeted data channels include stored procedures and web application input parameters. These injected statements are then passed to the database where they are executed. Using SQL injection, attackers may gain unrestricted access to an entire database, preventing SQL injection. Three techniques can be combined to effectively combat SQL injection, intrusion prevention IPS, query level access control, and event correlation. IPS can identify vulnerable stored procedures or SQL injection strings. Security managers who rely on IPS alone could be bombarded with possible SQL injection alerts. It is unlikely that the SQL injection signature and another violation would appear in the same request during normal business operation. Secure Sphere integrates dynamic profiling, IPS, and correlated attack. Dynamic profiling delivers query level access control by automatically creating profiles of each user's and application's normal query patterns. Any query that does not match established user or application patterns are immediately identified. Secure Sphere IPS includes unique database signature dictionaries that are designed specifically to identify vulnerable stored procedures and SQL injection strings. Correlated attack validation correlates security violations originating from multiple secure sphere detection layers. Weak audit trial. Automated recording of all sensitive and or unusual database transactions should be part of the foundation underlying any database deployment. Weak database audit policy represents a serious organizational risk on many levels. Regulatory risk. Organizations with weak or sometimes non-existent database audit mechanisms will increasingly find that they are at odds with government regulatory requirements. Deterrence. Like video cameras, recording the faces of individuals entering a bank database audit mechanism serves to deter attackers who know the database audit tracking provides investigators with forensics link intruders to a crime. Detection and recovery. Audit mechanisms represent the last line of database defense. If an attacker manages to circumvent other defenses, audit data can identify the existence of a violation after the fact. Audit data may then be used to link a violation to a particular user and or repair, repair the system. Preventing weak audit. Quality network-based audit appliances address most of the weaknesses associated with native audit tools. 
high performance. Network-based audit appliances can operate at line speed with zero impact on database performance. In fact, by offloading audit processes to network appliances, organizations can expect to improve database performance. Separation of duties. Network-based audit appliances may operate independently of database administers, making it possible to separate audit duties from administrative duties as appropriate. In addition, since network devices are independent of the server itself, they are also invulnerable to privilege elevation attacks carried out by non-administrators. Cross-platform auditing. Network audit appliances typically support all leading database platforms, enabling uniform standards and centralized audit operations across large heterogeneous database environments. Secure Spear Audit Capabilities Universal user tracking makes individual users accountable for their actions even when they access the database via commercial Oracle, SAP, PeopleSoft, etc. or custom web applications. It includes pre-configured reports that answer common audit questions while allowing for the creation of customized reports to meet enterprise specific requirements. Denial of service. Denial of service DOS is a general attack category in which access to network applications or data is denied to intended users. Denial of service DOS conditions may be created via many techniques, many of which are related to previously mentioned vulnerabilities. The DOS attacks are often linked to extortion scams in which a remote attacker will repeatedly crash service, servers until the victim deposits funds to an international bank account. Preventing denial of service. The DOS prevention requires protections at multiple levels. Network, application and database level protections are all necessary. This document focuses on database specific protections. In this database specific context, deployment of connection rate, rate control, IPS, query access control and response timing control are recommended. Secure peer DOS protections. IPS and protocol validation prevent attackers from exploiting known software vulnerabilities to create DOS. Dynamic profiling automatically provides query access control to detect any unauthorized queries that may lead to DOS. DOS attacks targeting platform vulnerabilities, for example, would be likely to trigger both IPS and dynamic profile violations. Response timing, database DOS attacks designed to overload server resources lead to delayed database responses. Database communications pro protocol vulnerabilities. A growing number of security vulnerabilities are being identified in the database communication protocols of all database vendors. Fraudulent activity targeting these vulnerabilities can range from unauthorized data access to data corruption to denial of service. Preventing database communication protocol attacks. Database communication protocol attacks can be defeated with technologically commonly referred to as protocol validation. Protocol validation technology essentially parses or dis disassembles database traffic and compares it to expectations. In the event that live traffic does not match expectations, alerts or blocking actions may be taken. Secure Spear Database Communication Protocol Validation Secure Spear's database communication protocol validation audits and protects against protocol threats by comparing live database communications protocols to expected protocol structures. Weak Authentication Weak authentication schemes allow attackers to assume the identity of legitimate database users by stealing or otherwise obtaining log login credentials. An attacker may employ any number of strategies to obtain credentials. Brute force. The attacker repeatedly enters username and the password combinations until he finds one that works. The brute force process may involve simple guesswork or systematic enumeration of all possible username and password combinations. Social engineering, a scheme in which the attacker takes advantage of the natural human tendency to trust in order to convince others to provide the login credentials. Direct credential theft, an attacker may steal the login credentials by copying post-it notes, password files, etc. Preventing authentication attacks. Strong authentication, the strongest practical authentication technologies and policies should be implemented Two-factor authentication, tokens, certificates, biometrics, etc. are preferable whenever possible. Directory integration. For scalability and ease of use, strong authentication mechanisms should be integrated with enterprise directory infrastructure. 
Among other things, a directory infrastructure can enable a user to use a single set of login credentials for multiple databases and applications, secure peer authentication protections. Unfortunately, despite best efforts at strong authentication, breakdowns occasionally occur. Password policies are ignored. A lucky attacker may successfully brute force even a reasonably strong password. A legacy authentication scheme may be required for practical reasons. The list goes on. Dynamic profiling. Dynamic profiling automatically tracks a range of user attributes that detect compromised login credentials. These attributes include user IP addresses, host names and operating system, username and client application. Backup data exposure. Backup database storage media is often completely unprotected from attack. As a result, several high-profile security breaches have involved theft of database backup tapes and hard disks, preventing backup data exposure. All database backups should be encrypted. In fact, some vendors have suggested that future DBMS products may not support the creation of encrypted, unencrypted backups. Encryption of online production database information is often suggested, but performance and cryptographic key management drawbacks often make this impractical and are generally acknowledged to be a poor substitute for granular privilege controls described. Let us understand the firewalls and database recovery. A firewall is typically a piece of hardware or router behind which database servers reside. It attempts to guarantee that only authorized clients can access the server. Most security experts believe that insiders are responsible for a vast majority of computer crimes. Firewall topology. The most basic firewall topology is the basic border firewall. In this architecture, the firewall is a single host interconnecting a corporation's internal network, its intranet or private network, and some untrusted network, typically the internet. Data recovery. Data security has become a necessity for every individual who is connected to the internet and uses the internet for any purpose. It is a requirement that is a must in every aspect of the operation performed on the internet. Databases are the storage areas where large amounts of information is stored. The nature of information stored varies and depends on different organizations and companies. Database security is essential because they suffer from security threats that may prove harmful and disastrous if disclosed or accessed publicly. Let's talk about database security techniques. Securing database using cryptography. The proposed mechanism performs column-wise encryption that allows the users to classify the data into sensitive data and public data. Mixed cryptography database scheme is presented. The technique involves designing a framework to encrypt the database over the insecure network in a diversified form that comprises of owning many keys by various parties. Securing database using steganography. Explain various techniques in steganography that can be implemented to hide critical data and prevent them from unauthorized and direct access. A distributed database system, it allows applications to access data from local and remote databases. Distributed databases use client-server architecture to process information requests. Distributed database. A distributed database is a database that is under the control of a central database management system, DBMS, in which storage devices are not all attached to a com common CPU. A distributed database can reside on network servers on the internet, on corporate intranets or extranets or on other company networks. The replication and the distribution of databases improves database performance at end-user work sites. Besides distributed database replication and fragmentation, there are many other distributed database design technologies. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Oracle uses schemas and security domains to control access to data and to restrict the use of various database resources. A sufficiently granular query level access control mechanism would allow the rogue university administrator described previously to update contact information but issue an alert if he attempts to change his grades. The construction of the web application normally limits users to viewing an individual patient's healthcare history, multiple records cannot be viewed simultaneously and electronic copies are not allowed. In a SQL injection attack, a perpetrator typically inserts or he injects an unauthorized database statement into a vulnerable SQL data channel.